And um, at first, when she had uh, taken notice of this plant, it, the stuff coming out of the smokestacks would dissipate quickly, and you know, people just didn't really pay any mind to it. And then she had noticed, though, that you know, one day that that this thing seemed to be pumping out clouds that had um, characteristics of the same types of geoengineering clouds and the coloring at you know right before sunset and and that type of thing and I, I really dug in and, and researched that thoroughly and come to find out the air quality tests that um, were going on around a, a number of those types of plants around the United States had showed the same chemicals that were being dispersed in the aerosols um, with geoengineering and chemtrails and uh, she sees that cloud bank that Rose is speaking of. She lives right along the coast. Um, and she said before, and I remember because I, was a, I lived down there when I was a kid, and I remember, you know, the coast would get socked in with the fog, you know, every now and then. And, and, but normally between, you know, 10 o'clock and noon, that, that um, fog bank would dissipate. Well, now that these um, clouds are being pumped out, and this particular power plant was right along the coast, um, now that these clouds are being pumped out, it's forming into these huge, long cloud banks that stick around all day long and, and, and doesn't, they don't dissipate. They, they hang out. And then, uh, once again, right around sunset, you know, or right after sunset, these cloud banks are turning the same colors that we see, you know, in the sky with the, the geoengineered clouds and you know along those lines Michael I was wondering you know um, there's you don't necessarily need to see the actual trails in the sky to know that geoengineering is going on you know above you and I was wondering if maybe you could um, explain that a little bit to our listeners and what they might look for in their skies absent of the trails for signs yep. that geoengineering is going on Absolutely. And Hawaii, up until a few months ago, did not have planes that were spraying above it. They were spraying a couple hundred uh, miles out, and it was blowing in. But if you study time-lapse uh, photography or time-lapse videos, you can find them on YouTube, put in chemtrails time-lapse. Uh, what it looks like, typically it looks like what's a cirrus cloud, or I call uh, the aerosols uh, a cotton candy cloud. It almost looks like cotton. Uh, that's being pulled, so you can see uh, some streaks in it. And, uh, you, you know, I also want to urge people not only to look with your eyes, but also to do tests, because the, the proof is in the test. And uh, rain tests are very, uh, very uh, simple to do, uh, and they're very inexpensive. You can do them, uh, get, get um, them tested for about $20. And... Uh, and anyways, uh, they will reveal if these programs uh, have been implemented. I, again, right when I got to Hawaii, I knew that they were spraying because of what I saw, but not everybody was convinced. Um, so I spoke with a public official who uh, actually obtained over 30 tests, all which revealed contamination of aluminum, barium, and strontium. So uh, testing is very important. And then also, we can use this uh, in the legal system and address this with with our local boards and, and start to take political action. So it's very important to, uh, to do tests. But, yes, also, like you said, to identify in the sky, uh, it's happening over just about every region, not every country, but almost every country. And, again, geoengineers want to completely block out the sun. They want to uh, use these programs so that no sun, from my understanding, can get through to us. Right, and one of the things that I have noticed, I have uh, the, even the blue skies that we have here on days that it doesn't look like they're spraying chemtrails, we have that white reflective haze, you know, that never used to be there before. You used to be able to see our foothills, you know, from where I lived, and now it's it looks like it's Southern California, you know, smog only it's it's white and it's reflective, you know, type of haze, and you can barely see those foothills and, and you know I just the skies don't look blue to me anymore I call them milky blue you know because that's all the, those that particulate that I, I notice up in the sky it looks like a really light baby bluish color but yet if you look off in the distance you can't see the mountains and the foothills like you used to be able to 
through that. Um, and is that pretty much what you're seeing down there as well? It, it definitely is. Yeah, yeah, our skies are definitely changing. Uh, it's interesting that you said that because uh, back in the late 80s, I moved from Chicago to Arizona. And this is really uh, kind of how this whole issue clicked with me because when I moved there, rarely a blemish in the sky. And I remember the deep blue skies that we had that were almost purple. And uh, it was just, uh, I was in awe coming from Chicago. Um, however, I left for a few years, came back in, uh, just after 2003, and I noticed that there were clouds, and I thought they were serious clouds, uh, almost on a daily basis. So I knew that there was a change at that time. I didn't know anything about chemtrails, you know, engineering, so I didn't know what it was. Um, thought it might have been due to warming, more moisture in the air. Uh, hindsight's 2020. Now I know exactly what it is, and, uh, and those blue skies are gone. You know, it's, it's a much lighter blue and uh, so even if they're not spraying in our region, we're still being affected by this. These particulates, uh, according to geoengineer David Keith, said that the lifetime of suspension of these particles are years for some right. of them. So, and obviously they <laughs> fall down in the air that we breathe, we inhale them, and uh, it's not good. Yet some of these, some of these uh, particulates are falling very, very quickly, uh, Michael. You know, I have, uh, this was again originally brought to my attention by Claire Swinney from Northern Chemtrail Watch. The um, polymers that are sprayed and um, fall to the ground, they fall all over our television aerials, all over our plant life. You can only see them, they're like long web-like structures. Uh, and you can only see them when the sun's sitting behind them. But, you know, often if you go into the bush, there's just you, there can be 50 feet of these things. Um, and, and people just assume that they're spider webs, but they're not. In fact, if they could make them as light as spider webs, um, they, would, well, they would stay in the air a lot longer. So a lot of these things are falling very, very quickly on us. Um, another issue that I wanted to address with you, Michael, because I think this is the most important thing to, to, to speak about. You know, we're speaking to a fairly educated chemtrail audience here. Now, the chemtrail versus contrail issue. When I was a child, contrail were, were a very rare thing to the point of when we saw one, we were in utter awe. And there's, there's certain conditions that those contrails are being made in. You, you agree with that, yes? Well, now we are seeing... What, what, what I'm observing here, watching the mountain, is a chemtrail will be laid and then a plane will go across and lay a contrail and then a chemtrail will go, and then a contrail will go in. These are all chemicals being worked together. So unfortunately, this contrail thing is just lulling us into another, another lie because most of those contrails are not normal or natural. They are spraying chemicals in many of those contrails. And, and we really need to push this. Because, you know, the, the basis of the film is saying, you know, chemtrails are different to contrails and contrails are normal. Well, the ones that I'm observing and I'm observing every day are not normal. Um, they, you know, they're happening in all weather conditions and um, I, I just want to stress that because, you know, it, observe, use your eyes. It, it is not normal to have a contrail. It needs specific weather conditions. Yeah, you're absolutely, absolutely. In areas of uh, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, where it's very dry, um, but they're seeing uh, these things on, on a regular basis, five to, to six days a week. You, you know, come on. There are not weather conditions conducive to contrails. And contrails do not, uh, they, they don't stay in the sky for several hours. Now, NASA does have some studies, you know, that show that, persistent contrails are real and, and they happen on, on a regular basis. Um, but uh, my question is, why should we trust NASA? You know, people, uh, the debunkers always come in, they say, well, they, they cite NASA, you know, stating um, these facts about contrails. What we're seeing is persistent contrails. A, persistent contrails do not have the fallout of aluminum, barium, strontium, other biologicals that we've seen up to 50,000% increases in just in the past six years. But getting back to NASA, my question is, why should we trust NASA? Is it because they're dependent on, on billions of, of uh, political dollars? Is that why we should trust them? 
Um, you, you know, uh, and so again, um, the the proof is in the testing, and and again, we're seeing that we're seeing fallout from from these programs. Uh, that fallout was not there um, several years ago. It was not there eight, nine years ago. And, and again, it's increased uh, up to 50,000 percentage points uh, in some cases in, in rain and snow tests. So, so again, and this is not limited to any specific area. We're seeing these numbers all around the world where the trails are. So, Certainly, you know, and the about, about trusting NASA, I mean, at the end of the day, this is the NASA weapon system. This is their space-based weapon system. So, you know, um, we, we do have to be very careful about uh, NASA information and that is such a shame considering, you know, this is funded by the taxpayer anyway. Um, and, and, and there you go, right there, you know. Um, the general population is going to say, well, you know, if you can't believe in NASA science, then you know, there's something wrong with you. I mean, they've got it covered on every angle, don't they, Michael? Yeah, it's uh, it's a little concerning, but I think people are waking up. You know, they they are seeing that that there is money and money corrupts, and and that there's power. And and again, you know, I just want to. I know we're running late in, into the interview, but I just want to touch on on the the amount of power that can be gained from these programs. And again. Uh, we believe it's many different things, uh, primarily weather modification, but uh, looks like it's uh, it's total food control. But also, many of these people, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, even uh, Bill Gates, who, by the way, uh, has, uh, well, we'll get into this in a second, he's, he's a funder into geoengineering, they've been very open about their agenda in reducing the population. So there is a population reduction uh, agenda. So, uh, but again, getting back to, um, the amount of power, just controlling the weather. If you control the weather, you literally control everything. You can corporatize things, and you can create this world government, the new world order uh, that many of these criminals have been talking about for a very long time. So um, these programs are very instrumental at achieving the goals of these criminal elites, um, and that's why they're using deception. That's why it's so important that, that people are not awake to these. But uh, I think people are starting to, to question. They're seeing weird weather patterns, uh, earthquakes, you know, at a frequency that we've never seen before. And it uh, looks like aluminum because aluminum is a very good conductor uh, in the sky. It's not a great conductor in wire, you know, in power wire. Uh, copper is, but it's much more heavy. So uh, as you stated earlier, I think it was Joy, you had stated that aluminum has four times the coagulation rate, so it stays up in the sky much longer uh, than other metals. And again, it's a conductor, so um, they can use different technologies to emit frequencies. Uh, and actually, according to geoengineers, they have technology with geoengineering programs to actually heat up over 400 square miles of our atmosphere. What that can do is create high-pressure systems, low-pressure systems, and uh, essentially give them the, the ability to steer storms. So people are scratching their head going, why is the weather getting so weird? Well, <laughs> we think we have the solution to it, and that's because of the uh, chemtrail geoengineering issue. Oh, I, I agree, and the ability to steer storms is very, very evident for anyone that wants to watch the satellites. You know, we were probably to one last year. Um, it came in, it knocked out my corn plants and my pumpkin, um, hung over Wellington as if to say, well, we're off to do your dirty work now, Prime Minister. And then they steered the storm straight into Fiji, absolutely slammed Fiji. People died, but no one in the media got to hear about this. Um, now, on that, on that issue, while they're steering these storms and they're creating tornadoes and floods and all these other things, the areas around them, Texas, for example, you know, has, has been on fire. Now, it's my understanding that um, the magnesium and aluminium settles on the trees in its um, fine metal form. It's an accelerant. Um, so this is what's causing these savage wildfires. Well, you know, the state next door is, is in floods. Is, is, that, is that something you know about, Michael? It, it is. Um, there are many re Well, in Arizona, there are many different reasons why uh, the storms are getting more severe, but aluminum, you're correct, it is an accelerant, so it will make fires burn hotter and more intense. And, uh, of course, that's what we're seeing. Um, 